Multifunction is a cornerstone of small space design. And this week we visit an incredible tiny home in France, which is absolutely jam packed with clever design features that make this ultra compact home amazingly functional. Hi, welcome in France. I'm Geoffrey and I will show you my tiny house called La Cabane Mini Habitat, which means tiny home cabin. I'm not legally parked here because in France it's very complicated. I live on the land of my owner and in exchange I can help her for daily tasks. Why I choose to build and to live in a tiny house? To begin, I studied entire architecture design and I was not agree with the conventional way of building and the philosophy, the way of thinking of this universe. I wanted to change rules and to build with more sustainability, more respect, extra, but it was very difficult. At the end of my studies, it was a very difficult moment of my life and I decided to travel to Colombia. I lived in a very little neighborhood, very poor, and I lived with indigenous people in the mountain. So I was in a very little home with a lot of people, but I was so much more happy than in France in new buildings. So it changed my way of thinking about all of this. And when I came back in France, I needed somewhere to live. I didn't want to rent and I realized that I didn't want a big house because bigger is the house, the more you have things to do and less time you have and extra, extra. So I wanted a little space which can move because I didn't know where I want to live. I want to move with my home, with my sacred place. So I discovered the tiny house concept and at the same time I wanted to change the way of thinking of architecture. So I decided to build the home, but to share in the same time all the knowledge I will discover to help other one to build this way, which is more sustainable. And if each people share a little bit knowledge about sustainability constructions, a day it will be more easy to build with respect than the conventional way. So for all of these things, I began to draw, to design and to build my own tiny house. What I wanted, it's a tiny house which looks like an old rustic cabin. So it's why I use this cladding in Polonia wood. It's a very lightweight wood. The dimension of the tiny house is 6 meters long, 2.5 meters wide and 4.3 meters high. And here the tiny house is grid connected to the owner house. Okay, now we can go inside. So welcome inside. What I wanted inside, it was like outside to fill in a rustic cabin. So I used reused materials. Another thing very important, it was to fill a separation between the different spaces without partitions. And the third thing very important in the tiny house is the storage. Each centimeter is used and I have storage everywhere for everything to don't spend all my time to tidy up my tiny house. For example, in the entrance, I used the four centimeters of the depth of the wall to have some little storage for little things like spices or keys. Even if it's small, it's very useful. So here is the kitchen. It's a space very important for me because I like to cook and a lot of the materials are reused. The work plan was an old table. The sink was an old jam pan and shelves are wood reused from the cladding. I have an oven, a fridge, a cooktop, and I can put a washing machine if I want. And I didn't want to have my dishes draining on my work plan, so I create a drainer at the top of my sink, and I create a storage in the ceiling for my jars. The lids are screwed in the wood and it's very useful. And in the floor, I have a trapdoor to have an access below my tiny house to put some vegetables to keep it fresh. I keep it open when I'm not here. It's very useful for my cat called Shamut. She can come and go as she wants. Then over here we have the bathroom. To me, the bathroom have to be very cozy 
and I have compostable toilets hidden when I don't use it. It looks like a beautiful bench and I really wanted to have a wide shower. I feel very cozy in my shower because it's in wood and I didn't put a sink in my bathroom because I think one sink in the kitchen it's convenient for me and I prefer to have more space in my bathroom. And now let's go to the living room. The living room, it is the most important place for me in my house. It's like a sacred, chill place. Now it looks like very empty because I wanted a free space, but everything is storage and foldable. I really wanted a multi-purpose space. We can have some tables to eat, we can have a desk to work, we can have another bedroom to sleep, we can chill and look some movies, we can dance, we can play music or read. It's very a living space. To come in the platform, I design a step drawer. I can open it to have some storage and I can put it back entirely if I need more space. And after we have a lot of trapdoor to access to all the storages, and we have two lifting tables. I can open just one if I want to draw, for example. Or I can open both if I need more space to put a lot of things to work. When I open both tables, we can eat at eight people. And I worked a lot at home on my computer or drawing. So I wanted a big desk and I designed a sliding lifting desk because I want to be able to work sitting down and standing up to change during my workday. And I can put it back very quickly. I don't want to see my work stuff when I'm not working. And I don't want to clean my stuff when I don't use it. So the sliding desk permits me to put the desk in the storage. And it's very quick and I don't have to clean it. And the platform is very convenient to have a big space of storage for a lot of gears. And I love my memory wall in my living room where I put photos of my friends, of my travels, a lot of little objects of my life in South America, a photo of Oton who helped me a lot to build this tiny home. And in a tiny house, we don't have a lot of space, so we have to choose the object and the decoration we want to have. So each one is important. When I designed the tiny house, I really wanted to don't have a separation between inside and outside. So I have these big windows and there is really a connection between the living room and the deck outside. So when I open the big window, it's really like outside is another room of the house. So the deck is really an extension of the living room and the living room an extension of the deck. During the summer, all the tiny house is open and it's a very, very beautiful space. And now let's go to my bedroom. The bedroom, another sacred place for me. It's like the best cocoon of my life. And the first thing I really wanted is to have a big window to see the stars when I'm sleeping and to have beautiful light, to feel good, to feel in peace, to go to sleep. And I have something quite unique in my bedroom. It's a water tap because I didn't want to go to bed with a bottle of water, with a glass, and you don't have your glass. It is empty. You have to go down to drink. So I prefer to have my water tap here in the bedroom. And the wall at the top of my bed is a little bit inclined which permits to be very comfortable to read, to speak with other people, etc. And it's also a hidden storage to put a lot of things with a lot of space. I have been living in the tiny house for one year now and I feel very good because it's the first time of my life I have a house really designed for me. It's really the sacred place I wanted. And what I feel now is that I want to share more uh, with other people to share the place to live. This is a DIY tiny house which cost me 19,000 euros with a lot of reused materials and partnerships. The construction was a very important step in my life. It was difficult, a lot of work during winter. I lived in my camper van with no heat, no water, no electricity. 
So it was very tough. I built it with the help of Oton, which was my girlfriend at this time and now my best friend. And she has a lot of energy here in this space and it's very important for me. And the process of building a tiny house is very interesting because I really see who I am when I'm tired or when I don't have time. So it's a little bit like a therapy. So I really think that when you build your own home, you learn a lot about construction, but you learn a lot about yourself. And the construction was intense too, because in the same time, I decided to share all the knowledge and experience to help other people to build tiny house. So I wrote a lot of files and I also put uh, everything in a guidebook in French to share more information and more details. So it was a lot of work, but it was very important to me to share this knowledge because if I use a lot of energy and a lot of my time to find information, I feel that it's important to share this to help people to use less energy and less time after to build new tiny houses. And it's each time easier to build with sustainability, for example. I'm living in my tiny house and I'm super happy for this. But in the same time, the most important I have now is all the friendship and the relationships I discovered during my construction because I changed a lot of things of my life thanks to this project of tiny house. So maybe it is the goal of this project, finally, not to really have a place to live, but to grow up inside by the construction and to discover more people with who I really feel good. I wrote on my cladding all the name of each people who helped me for the construction and they are a little bit with me every time. Geoffrey set out to build himself a sanctuary, a place that was in alignment with his values and how he wants to live in the world and that is exactly what he's done here. In addition to being incredibly functional and packed full of some really neat ideas, this place is also beautiful, it's cozy, it's natural. Ultimately, it is everything that we can ask a home to be and so much more.